namely g beta alpha of x, g on an element g, and g the model fiber space. Okay, fine. So at this point in the book, he's worked out general fiber bundle jibber jabber. All right, and in the general fiber bundle jibber jabber, he's described transition functions on the fiber bundle. Transition functions tell you how the fibers glue together. So to understand how the fibers might be twisted over the base space, you can study the transition functions, the cocycle conditions, if you will, on the fibers, which is something that's been missing from my discussion today. But, um, so, uh, how can I say that? Um, um, uh, oh, I don't know if I can do that without going back. Way back in here. If this is under his section entitled Abstract Nonsense. No, probably not. Um, no good fix to this. All right, so anyway, um, theorem. So if you have M in the atlas above and the cocycle is just given above, then these functions just defined that I've just written here um, define an equivalence relation on the disjoint union, alpha in alpha of phi alpha of u alpha, Cartesian product with g, um, has equivalence relation given by these, these g tildes um, Oh, I just can't do it in the time I have left here, guys. Let me, let me tell you what we're going to... Let me just tell you in words what's going to happen here. The point is that by working on that equivalence relation, you can glue together these... Um, let's see here. What is phi alpha of u alpha? That's, that's actually a subset of, um, subset of Rn. Um, so this is a way of piecing together Cartesian products with a group to form some sort of fiber bundle where the transition functions have to do with these, these co-cycles. I mean, okay, let me, this is not happening in the current language. I don't, I don't think this is productive at the moment, the way I'm saying it. All right, so the, um, the larger point here is that in a principal fiber bundle, the fiber is the group. So actually, if we look at P, pi inverse of you know, U with some subset of M, then that's going to be diffeomorphic to, to U, um, you know, Cartesian product with G. More explicitly, there is a mapping psi that goes from pi inverse of u to u Cartesian product with g, and this map is a diffeomorphism. It's a diffeomorphism which respects the, you know, the pi map as well. I mean, um, 
it's still it's still also the case that pi inverse of a point is you know the point Cartesian product with G is bijectively corresponds to that anyway. Um, so in this world, we we're gluing and we're gluing a Lie group against uh, over each point in the manifold, and so let's see here. I'm trying to think of how to explain the co-cycles. I don't know if I can right now. I'm I'm just stuck. Well, anyway, let me just say this. Given the, given, given the structure, you can derive the co-cycles and they'll satisfy certain compatibility conditions. But you can go the other way around. You can give me a manifold with a set of co-cycles that satisfy the needed conditions and the equivalence class I was just writing down there will construct a principal fiber bundle with those co-cycle conditions. So in other words, you can assemble a principal fiber bundle by be given a, a base manifold and choose an appropriate Lie group and give the appropriate co-cycle conditions, you can build a principal fiber bundle from scratch like that by this gluing and so forth. All right, so that describing this trivialization process and the details of that is what we need in order to understand the, the, the relation I just pulled from my hat from you know, uh, physics last time. Uh, because principal fiber bundles are the ones where we talk about um, you know, connections and curvature and all that stuff. And so that's where, that's the home of those discussions. So we need to take a little bit more time to build up our concept of what is a principal fiber bundle. What, what, are, the, what are the players there? What, what are the participants in the game, so to speak? Um, you know, what's a section of a principal fiber bundle? A section of a principal fiber bundle is a, what is it? Well, we can say that much already. What's a section of a principal fiber bundle? would be like this, right? So a section would be a mapping, at least a, would be mapping from M up into P. So if you look at that, that's S of P is equal to P comma G of P, where G of P is a element of the Lie group, and that's a smooth assignment. In other words, that's a local gauge transformation. I mean, that's, well, that, that itself is applying, that I'm giving you a different element of the gauge group, I mean of the group, um, it's attaching a group element with a point dependence in a smooth way. That's the kind of thing we were looking at from a physics perspective last lecture. So it makes sense that there might be some connection. To make that connection explicit, though, requires me about another hour and a half of jibber jabber. Um, I can tell you some more things, though. One of the principal fiber bundles, which is interesting, one of the principal fiber bundles you can look at is the so-called frame bundle of a manifold. So what this is, is you know, the, the disjoint union over P and M of, you know, um, <laughs> set of um, frames. Yeah, thank you. Very good. <laughs> frames at P. What, is, what are frames? So that's this particular language for basis to the tangent space. So this is the set of all basis for the tangent space attached to each point. Did you know that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of all bases to the tangent space and GLN? This is G L N R. See, because if you give me any basis for Rn, I can take those and glue them together in a big n by n matrix, and that's an invertible matrix, and vice versa. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a selection of a basis and a supplying of an invertible n by n matrix. And for that reason, the frame bundle forms a principal fiber bundle where the principal, where the G is nothing more than the GLN, which corresponds to the selection of a local frame. So that's kind of neat, frame bundle. And you can use this frame bundle to do all, all kinds of stuff. You can look at reductions of the frame bundle so that you're just looking at orthonormal bases in which case your gauge group is reduced from GLN to? Yeah, exactly, ON. 
and that would give you a corresponding orthogonal frame bundle, which is again a principal fiber bundle with principal, you know, with the gauge group ON. Or you could look at special orthogonal bundle. I mean, you can, you can further reduce. And so this is another more general story you can play with, with principal fiber bundles, is if you have something for the group, you can also study corresponding um, you know, bundle constructions, corresponding subgroups of that given bundle. These are games you can play. So anyway, this is a very exciting new world of ideas to think about. And so we'll, we'll try to explore more next time. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Right, if I have a real vector space of dimension n, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of all possible bases for v and gln. Is, is it a natural correspondence? I think it's pretty natural. I mean, if, once you pick a basis, for rn, it's definitely natural. In the categorical sense, I don't know. To, oddly enough, the, the categorical notion of naturalness is not natural to me, so that's the problem. But that's just because it's my upbringing. But. Right, yeah. Canonical, yeah. Of course, if you have an inner product space, there is a natural bijection between an inner product space and the vector space, and it's dual. The musical morphism, which can be stated out without reference to coordinate systems. So I'm not sure, honestly, um, right off the top of my head, whether or not this um, bijection between frames and GLN is, is natural or not in that sense. I mean, frames has to do with choosing coordinates, so it seems, I don't know. Yeah, you can turn it off.